calling the meeting the legal voters of the town of New Pain for a warm meeting, special town meeting, with five items on our agenda in September 20th, and it's 10 past 6. So, I hope you all come again on the first Tuesday in March. But here you are. Uh, as always, we are going to use Robert's rules of orders. Um, I'm Deborah Luskin. I, you elected me to be town moderator, which is why I'm up here. Um, there was an informational hearing uh, held on Tuesday, September 6th, uh, on the subject of the cannabis laws. And at that meeting, we learned that we actually can't vote tonight on Articles 1 and 2, because the statutes require, the Vermont state statute regarding the cannabis laws require us to do that by Australian ballot. So on October 13th, the ballot will be, the voting will happen uh, at Town Hall from 9 in the morning until 7 at night, and early voting and absentee voting will start tomorrow at Town Hall. The Town Hall, it will be open, voting will be possible when the town clerk is open and in, in her office. And her office hours have recently changed. She is now in the office on Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 8 in the morning until 6 at night, on Wednesdays from 8 until noon, and on Fridays from 8 until 2. This is information that's available on the town website if you forget. Okay. Uh, now, because the articles about cannabis have been warned, we have to deal with them tonight. So we, I have done a little research, dug a little deeper into my Robert's Rules, and we are going to, the articles have to be moved and then withdrawn. So sit tight and watch. <laughs> but before, I need to know, is there anyone here who is not a legal voter of the town of New Fame, other than Austin? Uh, okay, could you please tell us who you are? Yeah, and um, what brings you here, Hannah? I live here now. But you're not registered to vote? <coughs> if you'd like to be, you can see the town clerk. Oh, actually, hey. see, the, see the people at the table. Back you can there. see the people at the table, and in Vermont, I think you can register right now. <coughs> and welcome to, to New Thing. Thank you. All right. So, as always, you're not a registered voter, but you will be someday. It's great that you're learning. Welcome. When, when we do get to the part where this meeting is open and you get to speak, I'm going to ask anyone who speaks to please stand up, tell us who you are for the record, it's required, and address your comments to the chair. All right. I will do my best to recognize everybody in the order I, I see your hands go up. And if you need help dealing with Robert's rules, ask me, and I'll try to find the answer if I don't know it. OK? So Article 1, is there a motion? I make a motion. The chair recognizes our select board chair, Sandra. Angela. <laughs> Angela. Shall I read it? Sanford. <laughs> yes, you make. You can make the motion. I move the motion for Article One. Shall the voters of the town of Newfane authorize cannabis retailers in the town of Newfane pursuant to Title Seven BSA Section Six Eighty Three. Cannabis retailer means a person licensed by the State Cannabis Control Board 
to sell cannabis and cannabis products to adults 21 years of age and older for off-site consumption. I second the motion. Madam Moderator, I'd like to withdraw my motion. I second withdrawing. <laughs> the motion has been withdrawn. If you came here to discuss or to, to learn more about the cannabis vote, we will deal with it under other business in Article 5. We're now moving on to Article 2 because Article 1 has been withdrawn. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion to, for Article 2. Shall the Town of Newfane voters authorize retail portions of integrated licensee operations in town pursuant to 7 VSA Section 863? Integrated licensee means a person licensed by the State Cannabis Control Board to engage in the activities of a cultivator, wholesaler, product manufacturer, retailer, and testing laboratory in accordance with state law. I second. Madam Moderator, I would like to withdraw my motion. I second. <laughs> Article 2, the motion has been withdrawn. Again, we can discuss uh, the pros and cons of cannabis uh, legislation under Article 5. Article 3, shall the voters appropriate $250 to Windart Wyndham Disaster Animal Response Team to focus on pet food distribution to insecure pet families, social appropriation missing from the 2022 town meeting votes. Do I hear a motion on Article 3? Aye, Please stand up and tell us who you are. Wind Forest, South New Bay. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. And for the record. Uh, uh, Dennis was right. Thank you. The Article 3 has been moved and seconded, and I am going to read it again. <coughs> and I'm going to teach you all something. Once I read it, it's in motion. All right? Until I read it, it's not, and it can be withdrawn. So I'm going to read this. Shall the voters appropriate $250 to Windart, Wyndham Disaster Animal Response Team, to focus on pet food distribution to food insecure pet families, social appropriation missing from 2022 town meeting votes. The person who makes the motion is recognized first or has the right to be recognized first. Would you like to speak to this article? Okay. <clears throat> um, how many of you in here have pets? Um, the reason I think it's a good motion is that, especially as we went through COVID previously and are still coming out of it, there are people who need help taking care and paying for food for the pets. Um, the um, Windor is an organization I've been part of and training for um, emergencies. Um, in particular, if um, if we had another, guys forbid, another Hurricane Irene, they are trained to, we're trained to be able to have the animals that you can't take care of in the facility and be able to take care of them. So we go through a lot of training. So I just think it's a good organization and want to support. Um, I've donated personally quite a bit of food to the organization for distribution. Is there any further conversation? We can't hear anything down here. Is the court on <coughs> okay, so this is Lynn Forrest. Um, I've been on your planning commission for about six years and recently have turned over the leadership to another person, Ken Esty. That's my background. And I'm a JP that you've elected. Thank you. Um, so I support this organization in a lot of ways. As you've seen, many, many of you have pets. And you can imagine the anguish if somebody's got a pet and they've got to choose whether to give it up, turn it over, or then receive some donated uh, food help for their animals. Windart or Wyndham Area um, uh, Rescue is, is set up, thank you, 
Do I need to read it again? No, no, you can just read the name. Okay, <laughs> thank you. We call it Rindor. Uh, Rindor Disaster Animal Response was set up after um, Hurricane Irene when people couldn't take their animals and wouldn't leave their homes because they couldn't take their animals. And so we go through a lot of training on setting up have, what do you do in an emergency and responding to the emergency. So if people, if there is an emergency, if there is another hurricane on the green or something like that, then there is some place people can take their animals and we've been trained to uh, set up a facility and uh, make sure the animals are taken care of. In the meantime, there are people out there who can't afford to pay for their cat or dog or horse food. So that's what this motion is for, and I fully support the organization. I personally donate quite a bit of cat food toward the organization, and I'd appreciate your positive vote. Are there any further comments or questions? Sir. Ken Bauer, is this just a one time? I mean, is that all the money you're asking for? So Ken Bauer asks, is this just a one-time appropriation? Don't they need more money? Don't they need more money? Don't they need, don't they need more money? Uh, we're going to have a select board member answer that. Here. Organizations come to us. I'm Ann Gallo for the select board, sorry. Um, organizations come to the select board once a year and make a request for an appropriation. We listen to the information and then it is put on the ballot for people to vote on. So in this case, this is what they were asking for in terms of support. I presume that they go to every town and make a similar request. <coughs> Yes. Question. Uh, Neil Peltzu, um, are all the towns in Wyndham County acting on a similar uh, motion proposal? Neil Peltzu's question is, are other towns or all the towns in Wyndham County making similar contributions? Is there anyone who can answer that question? <coughs> Angela Sanborn, Select Board. I presume they've all done it at their regular town meeting in March. This was left off our ballot, so that's why we're doing it now. James Russell, uh, how long has this organization been in effect? And have they come to us in previous years, missing 2022 as an anomaly? So this is James Russell who asks if how long Windard has been coming to Newfane and have they been supported in the past? Or is 2022 an anomaly? Who can answer that question? I can't tell you exactly when it started. I know they've been in existence for five or six years and they have been received to uh, 2019, 2020, um, 2021. I think they've received the uh, $250 um, at, at all of the town meetings. It's been part of the nonprofit list that's in your town report. I'm going to stand here in case there's another question. <laughs> well, I, I have a question that I think uh, people would like to know the answer to, and that is why it, are we voting on it in September instead of March, last March? And I think that needs to be explained. Who can explain? Who's willing to explain it? Thank you, Winnetta. Winnetta Powling, Administrative Assistant. It was a clerical error when I was putting together the town report. Um, it, they had presented and explained how they had requested the funds and how they benefit the town, but it was omitted when I put the articles all in order. So 
It was my fault. It was clerical. And was the money appropriated at town meeting? Yes. So this is money that's already been appropriated but was left off. off Sounds like a off fairy tale. Off their vote. With the envelope goes under the rug and it's okay. They didn't so, approve it, but it was appropriated. It was appropriated without being approved. I believe that you are here tonight to approve it or not approve it. Is there any further questions, comments, opinions? Yes. James Russell, uh, wouldn't it have been good to have one of your members to come and explain to us? Because what we've heard so yes. far is assumptions what people think, but we really, we're going to be voting on something we really don't get. Um, okay, I, you're going to speak because you're a member. Uh, I want, I'm going to ask also is, was this, um, in our town report in March, was there a report in the printed report? There was, there was in fact a printed report from this organization in the town report. Uh, we have a question to be answered, and then I'll recognize you, sir. Um, I'm not quite. Um, I I already spoke about being uh, a member of the, of uh, Windark. Um, I don't know, and they did present um, the a letter that went to the town, like all the other nonprofits did. Um, that explain the services that they provide in the uh, different towns in Windham County. Did I answer your question? No, uh, not really. Do, would you restate your question so I can try to answer it? Please? My question is that I, in reading this article, it seems like this is the first time it's been discussed. Um, it is, somebody's got their hand in the back, right away. Um, the question, so you can hear, is James Russell saying, is this the first time this has been discussed? He, he feels that it is the first time it has been discussed. Um, I'm going to have Ann, Ann, Ann Gollum, select board. Just to clarify, they did everything that every other nonprofit that requests money has done. They came and met with the select board. Those meetings are available on BCTV. Minutes of the meetings are available. They presented a written request explaining how they use the money and their overall budget. That is part of the town report. So since all the information was presented and is available to the public, the goal of today is really just to formalize the voting on that particular article. We did not make all that information available again when we publicized this meeting since we had done it previously. Uh, there's this gentleman. James Lennage, Win Wiswall Hill Road. I make a motion we move to a vote. Yes. <laughs> The motion has been called, uh, which requires a two-thirds vote to, to end discussion. So I'm going to ask you to, um, we're going to vote. If you are in favor of ending discussion on this article, you will say aye when I give you the cue. If you are against ending discussion, you will say nay. And if you abstain, you're just not going to say anything. <laughs> All right? And I need to be, I need to hear exactly two-thirds or more people in favor of ending discussion. If, if I can't tell, we'll have to go to a, a hand or standing division of the House. So, all those in favor of ending discussion on Article 3, please indicate so by saying aye. Aye! And those opposed by saying no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And the motion to end discussion passes. So now we vote on the article. Article 3. 
Shall the voters appropriate 250? <laughs> Shall the voters appropriate $250 to Windart, Wyndham Disaster Animal Response Team, to focus on pet food distribution to food insecure pet families? Social appropriation missing from the 2022 town meeting vote. All those in favor of correcting this clerical error and appropriating the $250 will indicate so by saying aye. Those against will say nay on my cue. All those in favor of passing Article 3, please indicate so by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed by saying nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. Article 3 passes. We are now on to Article 4. Shall the town of Newfane voters appropriate transferring surplus funds of $300,197 to cover the shortfall of taxes for fiscal year 2023? Do I hear a motion? Okay. Carol moves, and I need a second. second. Greg, Greg, record, seconds it. Uh, I will read it again, and we can open discussion. Shall the town of New Faith voters appropriate transferring surplus funds of $300,197 to cover the shortfall of taxes for fiscal year 2023? And is there, you don't want to speak to it? Yeah. Okay, is there anyone who does want to speak to this? Is there anyone? Uh, the gentleman in the back. They call it Dover Road, Elton Bay, where it's tough to get across the road without the speeders. You mean you want me to project? I'd like to all hear you. Okay, can everybody hear my voice at this moment? Yes. yes. All right. Okay, so. Uh, Please restate so your name. Edward Collins, South Newfane, Dover Road, where it's a speedway. Yes, it is. Uh, is this in relation to Article uh, yes. 4? Okay. Just defining where I come from. <laughs> the race track. Yes. Um, so I'm sort of fiscally conservative. And uh, with this as a budget item, and it's a projected budget item. Uh, we don't know what the weather's gonna be for the winter. We don't know what the mud season's gonna be, but uh, March we have town meetings, is that correct? Yes, first Tuesday in March. So uh, that would be close to the end of winter maybe, and into the beginning of mud season, and we'd have a better understanding because fuel prices are going up and down and costs go up and down, we have a better handle on how much money we should move from our taxpayer funded account from FEMA to the budget. That's my take. Thank you. Is there anyone who wants to explain why this is on today's uh, morning? The background on this is that when the um, tax rate was being calculated, there is a process that one goes through where you have to subtract the um, the expenses, the, the anticipated, let's say you don't have to back me up. Unanticipated revenue. The unanticipated revenue from what our expenses are. In error, that anticipated revenue of $300,000 was deducted twice. As a result, the tax rate was calculated to be, to bring in $300,000 less than what we need to cover our expenses. We have two options on how to correct it, at least two. Uh, which would be one, to redo the tax bills. Yes, an administrative big job to do that. If we were to do that, then the um, impact would be 
that for every $100,000 of home value, your taxes would go up $120. So if your home is worth, uh, let's say $400,000, you would owe an additional $480 for the year or $120 per quarter. And yes, we've already paid our first payment. Yes, it would be a little messy figuring out exactly how to do all of these calculations. We recognize that. But one option would be to redo the tax bills. The alternative is we are in an unusual situation this year. 12 years ago, Irene devastated our community. FEMA came in, said they would help. We got everything cleaned up. The town took out bank loans to cover all the expenses. FEMA then took 12 years to repay us. And I really just have to say again, thank you to Melissa Brown for all the work she did to make sure that that money came in. It is not easy to get the money back from FEMA, and she was really diligent about it. So thank you, Melissa. So we do have this extra money sitting in the account that typically we do not have. So we have a surplus of 300000 which is a lot for our size town, and historically it is a lot for our town. One, another alternative that has been proposed is, and that we're voting on tonight, is that we could use the surplus to cover the shortfall which was done in error. We have our expenses are our expenses. So we could use the shortfall, we could cover the shortfall with the monies that we received from FEMA. Um, what else should I say about this? Maybe you're done. Any, I think I'm done. Is there any questions? Um, Melissa and I are happy to answer. So if I understand what we're voting on here is um, a clerical error to, to remedy a clerical error. We're not raising new taxes. We are um, correcting having double dipped into unanticipated income. And we also, um, 2011, we had uh, Irene and promptly 11 years later, the federal government gave us money that we asked for to uh, repair bridges and roads. So uh, that, is that a correct assessment? Yes. All right. So I saw a lot of hands up before that, if I can remember, um, I think, I, Ed, I think I saw you before, and then we'll go to this side of the room. Ken, sir. Ken. Ken. Yeah. Ken Bauer. You have to speak louder. Ken Bauer, new thing. Is the 300000 going to cover everybody's shortfall in your taxes? So the first question is, will the $300,000 cover everyone's shortfall in their taxes? Uh, Missy, can you answer that question? We budgeted expenses against that 300000 so that's what it's going to go towards, all those expenses. The so expenses aren't our taxes. Well, the taxes are raised to pay for the expenses, along with the unanticipated revenue put together. But if it's voted on to put it towards everybody's taxes, will it alleviate any having to do the taxes over for the taxpayer to pay more taxes? So the question is, if we vote to use the surplus, will it replace having to redo the tax bills and everybody having to pony up the shortfall? That's your question, correct? Yes. And the answer is yes. 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 All right. Can I ask another question or no? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see, let's hear it. If we do not vote, 
for the money to go to the taxes. Where will the money go to and how will that be expended? Uh, so the question is, if we don't use the $300,000 surplus to pay the tax shortfall, how are we going to spend it? And I think I can say, come back to town meeting because that money can't be spent unless you people here say it can be. Okay. And I can, even I can answer that question. All right, the no. Pardon? They should go to the select board budget meetings. Everyone here should come to the select board budget meetings. Right? Yes. That's where all the decisions are made. Greg Record. I'd like a clarification. Ann mentioned three hundred thousand. If I'm not mistaken, I, my understanding was we have over seven hundred thousand dollars surplus. Is that correct, or have I heard wrong? We have about five hundred thousand right now, and two hundred and fifty or two hundred thousand roughly outstanding still and receivables that has not come in yet from this last flood. Okay. So. So. Yeah. So there Did, is, there's more. I guess my thing, why I'm doing this is, and I'm not picking on you, Ann, but there is more. This isn't going to wipe that surplus dry. Right. And while so, I've got the floor, I mean, to me, I just like to make a simple point. That's our money. Yes. However you want, I, I don't care where it came from, whatever, FEMA, whatever, that's our money. The select board went to the bank, borrowed money to pay off those loans. We're finally getting it back. That's ours. Now, I don't, to me, the simple thing is give it to us instead of going through the whole procedure or redoing our taxes. I mean, it was a mistake made. No reason to point fingers. It was a mistake. But this is the simple solution. I, I got to be honest with you, it's a no-brainer to me. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of hands up. I'm trying to do this in the order that I've seen them. The woman right? Yeah. Christine Drew, South New Fane. I would like to recommend that people consider using the funds to put a plug into the shortfall because in my opinion it's going to be a nightmare to try and uniformly go out there and, and put tax bills out. There's a lot of people that pay their um, taxes in their escrow accounts. That means the banks have to get the tax bills. If we have any property sales between the point of new taxes and this new budget, um, and you know all that's been prorated by attorneys in the last 45 days or 60 days, you know it's on the new property owners who know nothing about this. And as Greg pointed out, um, that's money that the town of Newfane taxpayers have already borrowed, paid interest on, and it's back in our coffers. Thank you, Missy. Yes. <laughs> okay? Um, and I, th I think it's the most reasonable, quick solution to make sure that we, we take care of it. So, did everyone hear that? I would like to recognize someone with a different opinion, if there is somebody like that in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fiona Frejavalle from from Williamsville. Um, we voted in in March to for the budget, and this was what we voted on for our tax rate. Correct? No. 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 We, didn't vote for tax. we don't vote on the tax. We rate. don't vote on the tax rate, but we voted for what we were going to spend money on this year. Yes. Correct. Yes. Budget. And there was just a clerical error, and I understand that it's going to take a little bit to fix the clerical error, but I think it's really important that we take the long view in thinking about how much we have in our surplus. We have, last year on my road, there was an unanticipated, in that huge rain, that washed out. That cost our town a lot of money. Our town has to pay for all of the things that keep our roads going, and there's so many more severe storms that are happening, and I think it's, we have a bridge that is, anticipated bridge that we're gonna have to, to redo on, Remind me where it is on Roy, Roy, Roy Brook Road. Right, there's all these things that our town has to pay for, and yes, it's our money, but it's also our money to invest in our town to make sure that it's a wonderful, livable place. And I think it is short-sighted for us 
to say I'd like to pay a couple hundred dollars less in my taxes for the benefit of our town. So I would like all of us to consider taking the long view and, and to have us go through the clerical, fix the clerical error, and pay what we said we were going to pay in taxes. Thank you. Is there someone with a different point of view? A question. What's your question? <clears throat> um, my my question is uh, two. We can't why 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 weren't corrective tax bills sent out as soon as the error was recognized? Why and how would the reissue of tax bills affect the rebates that people receive on their tax bills? Okay, I'm actually going to add, hold the answer to that because there's somebody who's going to pull his arm socket out and he doesn't get to speak. Uh, Kristen Johnson, new thing. Great, thank you very much for that very clear explanation. I uh, move the question, please. Second. Uh, um, we, so if you move the question, we're not going to get the answers to these questions here. It's, that's okay. The question has been moved. Is there a second? Second. Um, so again, I need a two-thirds vote to end discussion. We will not, we will all be on the edges of our chairs because we will not get the answers to the <laughs> questions if you say aye. Uh, okay? Um, so all those in favor of ending discussion on Article 4, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 And those opposed by saying nay? Nay. Mm. Is that two thirds? I think it was, but I'm going to ask those who, uh, do I have anybody from the Board of Civil Authority here? All right, if you are, uh, if you are in favor of ending discussion now, please rise. And if you are already risen and don't want to be counted in favor of any discussion, please sit. Okay. 
So, so, wait, 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 wait. What is your first number? So 83 for the first. You had 15 for the second. Oh, okay, so what I need is the total number of votes cast. 83 plus 15. Oh. I need I need to know um, what the one third of that is. It's a three and um, I know. three plus thirty-two and some. We'll call it thirty-three. We'll call it thirty-three and um, and two. So thirty sixty-six would be okay. Okay. Can I have your attention, please? There were a total of 98 votes cast, which means that we needed 66 votes to for two thirds, and there were 83 votes in favor of ending discussion and 15 opposed. So the vote to end discussion is sustained. It's now time to vote on Article Four. So, shall the town of shall the town of Newfane voters appropriate transferring surplus funds of three hundred thousand one hundred ninety-seven to cover the shortfall of taxes for fiscal year twenty twenty-three? If you are in favor, please say aye. 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 And if you are against, opposed, please say no. No. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. Article 4 passes. So, for those who would like to stay for um, other business to come before the town, We'll go move on to Article 5. We will give people, um, we're going to give people a chance to escape. Good to see you, as always. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Oh, yeah. Hey, Kenny. Love you. Mr. Denise is here. I love you. Thank you. Good to see you, Thank you, Margo. 
Is there any kind of local tax collection? No. Okay. That was my question. So, can I show hands? How many people here are uh, want to learn more about the cannabis laws than the vote that's coming up? And how many people here are have some other concern? All right. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to start here uh, because there, there's two other concerns and then we can move on to cannabis. Sure. Carlene Pelso, uh, I want to know what uh, procedures have been put in place or in place or going to be put in place so we don't have a this is really pretty major for a small town to have a short like that and I'd like to know what has been put in place or your planning for it doesn't happen again. So for those in the back who may not have heard, it was Carlene Pelson who has asked what safeguards have been put in place to prevent the kind of um, mistakes that led us to having this meeting tonight. And who can answer that? We have verbally agreed on a process which I said I would write up. I haven't had a chance to do so yet, but I will. And all of us in, on the select board and in the town office will sign off on it. And it will basically entail uh, laying out exactly how the procedure is done so that we have the checks and balances to make sure that everyone understands which numbers you start with, which numbers you deduct, and only deduct once. And, um, and then to make sure we have, before it is presented to the select board, to uh, have at least two or three people in the town office sign off that they have reviewed the numbers, and then for the select board to have the information in front of them so they can double check the numbers coming from the town, uh, the town plan, yes. which has all the numbers in it, so that everyone is double checking the original numbers to make sure it is done correctly. And is there something in place so that the, this $250 that we spent half an hour talking about that we will just, that's a matter of proofing, and we will proof it more carefully. Thank you. Yes. Do you want to say anything? That was my question. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Uh, is there any other non binding business? Yeah. Uh, Jake Urato, South Newfane. I just want to comment that having the town meeting at 6 p.m. drew a whole lot of people. <laughs> And having it during the day, a lot of us still work and have our own businesses. Um, the numbers, shoot the numbers, and uh, I hope other people notice. And I, I know traditions are hard to break, but it would be really nice to get this many people every year at our mm -hmm. town meeting. Yeah. Excuse me. What does it take to change our town meeting? Oh. Well, the question is, what does it take to change town meeting time? It, it requires an article, a warned article, and a vote. Uh, said something that has to be done in the town meeting. Yeah. 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 Yeah
prior to town meeting it has to happen at a town meeting. It could happen at a special town meeting or it could happen at a regular town meeting. So, I'm sorry, so just to be clear, does that mean that we could start a town meeting by voting on it and then proceed yeah, if it, it has to be two meetings? It, it takes, it has to be, there either has to be a special meeting to change it or you can have it at town meeting for the following year. Okay. The state of Vermont allows town meeting to take place on the first Tuesday. I think Saturday, possibly Sunday, and Monday before the first Tuesday of March. I would have to, I'd have to check that. Um, I, mean, I think it's just three days, but those are the three days before the first um, Sunday of March. Technically, you could end up having town meeting in February. I just want you to know that, because it's, um, but I can look up, or you can go to the um, Secretary of State's website. Anyone, any citizen voter can find out this information and with a groundswell of, uh, and do the work and bring it to the voters and see if it passes. Um, so I welcome you to do that. Yeah. Uh, J.K. Ratto again. The only wrinkle I see in that is that uh, over the years it's come up a couple times and the people that were voting were the ones that could make it to town meeting in the morning. Oh, <laughs> so the workers weren't there to vote. So they always said, no, we like it this time. They're, you know, we're retired or whatever and we can be here and, and to change it. There was a couple times. Can it be an article? Um, yeah, go ahead. I would propose that uh, the select board make this an item that we research and get all the information uh, right to the Vermont League of City and Towns and ask for their legal help and just get all the information and present it at a select board meeting so that we can then discuss what people want to do. Because at the moment, we just don't know the legal information right now. So let us, let us research that so we don't make a mistake. <laughs> Ed Collins again, um, South Wing Bank. Um, could the select board, in their infirm wisdom, uh, change, uh, propose a change to the hours, to the evening, so everyone could get a chance to vote? And can they put that on maybe an Australian ballot or something so it happens prior to next year's town meeting? We don't know, we will research all, we do not know. We will research and find out what legal options we have. So that'll come in a uh, subsequent town meet, uh, select board meeting? Correct. Great, thanks. I just want to say, well, not one way or the other, but I've been coming to this town meeting for 28 years, and I know it's been discussed, but only under non-binding business. I've never seen it as a warned article. Non-binding business is non-binding business. You can talk till you're blue in the face and you can't, but nothing you do can be um, enforced. It has to be a warned article. And so I don't believe that New Fame has ever done that. They, right, they talked about it and nobody there wanted to do it. Well. I'm just going to point out that nobody is everybody who lives in town, all right? So, <laughs> um, and that, that's the way a local direct democracy works. So, what else do you want to talk about under non-binding business? I know that our select person, Acadia Alvin Johnson, has, did I get that backwards? Yes. Katie Johnson. Johnson, Alvin. Uh, has prepared a PowerPoint presentation on this um, fairly complex issue of having um, cannabis for sale in New Thing. Are, are you, is that what you're here for? The movie? Okay. Um, you might want to move forward so you can see it and we're going to turn the lights out. Yes. Sorry, 
Thank you. Another one? <laughs> okay. Um, so the Article 1 is for retail cannabis. Shall the voters of New Fane authorize cannabis retailers in the town of New Fane pursuant to 7 VSA subsection 863? Cannabis retailer means a person licensed by the State Cannabis Control Board to sell cannabis and cannabis products to adults 21 years of age and older for off-site consumption. I'd like to walk you through the basics because I don't know how many of you have come and heard me talk about it over the last nine months or so that I've been presenting on it in bits and pieces as more information is available. I will start with the six license types. Wholesale licenses are buying from cultivators, distributing to retailers, labs, manufacturers, and integrated license holders. They cannot sell to the public. And we have no say over whether or not someone in the town of New Fane becomes a wholesaler. Laboratory. They test flour and manufacture products such as oils, tinctures, foods, etc., for THC and CBD content. Um, because everything's different, everything coming off a plant is a little bit different, so you have to have more knowledge for each batch that's coming through. Everything must be tested. We also have no say, as voters, whether somebody sets up a laboratory in the town of Cafe. Cultivation. There, is, there are six tiers for outdoor, indoor, and mixed cultivation levels divined by square foot uh, assuming that a single plant is eight feet square. Um, and that is under the Cannabis Control Board website, Rule 1, subsection 1.3.1. Um, if you'd like, I can read those off, but I'm going to keep going for now. Again, anybody can cultivate in the town of New Fane as long as they have their board, uh, as long as they receive their license, and the town residents have no say over that. Manufacturer, it's also a tiered, um, it's also a tiered license. Tier one is less than ten thousand dollars worth of gross income. Tier two, no flammable chemical solvent extraction methods. And tier three is the big one, and it includes all lawful methods of extraction as detailed in Rule 1, subsection 1.3.3. Um, again, anybody could set up and become a manufacturer in the town of Newfane, and us voters have no say over that. The only two that we have any say over is retail licensing, which is Article 1, and integrated retail licensing, which is Article 2. Retail licensing is a cannabis dispensary for the public to purchase flour and uh, manufactured products. And integrated licensing is all five types of licenses, but the caveat is that only five of these licenses will be given out in the state of Vermont. And they are being given out to existing medical marijuana, um, uh, medical cannabis companies. Um, they are corporations. And that's why I made the distinction between the two for us to vote on. So we can have mom and pops cannabis, and we can have the Dunkin' Donuts cannabis. It's our choice. We can have both, we can have none, we can have all. Um, let's see. So, The other license types have their own regulation through the State Cannabis Control Board and are subject to inspections by the board. That's how they stay on top of what's happening. Um, we, as a town, can form a Cannabis Control Council, which then has a little bit more input in working with the zoning administrator, Merle Tessier, who I saw, but maybe he's gone again. Um, and they will help, if we, if we do that, then we'll have a little bit more control and can exercise a small licensing fee 
um, no more than $100. And because we're not a chartered town with a 1% retail tax, we don't receive anything from the taxes that are coming from cannabis sales. Correct. Yeah, it's a heck of a process. What about property tax? Property tax? They would pay property tax. They would tax. pay property tax, yes. Um, hmm. what, what defines a chartered fire? What did you, what did you just read? Uh, uh, the, we are not, but we have not become a chartered town and we have not gone through the process to put forth a 1% retail tax, which is all goods, not food. So what um, does that tax you're talking about? Yeah. Right. So Brattleboro has that tax and Dover has that tax. Um, and it takes quite a while to go through. It's something that if the town of Newfane wants to, we can um, go ahead and start that process. It's a lengthy process. But it would apply to all goods sold in the town. W, &W the store, goods as well. and mail order goods. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. I'm Gloria. Gloria. Just, just to answer Carlene's question, remember probably 10 years ago, 11 years ago, we tried a charter. A charter, then you could vote anybody from any town to be the town clerk. It would be up to the select board to appoint the town clerk, to appoint the treasurer, to appoint, and there would be no election of town officials. So that's a charter, and it has to go completely through the state, and then once, and very few town cities in Vermont are charters, but that's mainly the whole um, process with that. And then they're able to do this one person. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you very much. Basic uh, tax question. So, Freeze or not, Williamsville? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, if a, let's just say a retail uh, establishment just moves into what is now a residential house in downtown. Yep. Uh, new Does that mean that they go into a different tax bracket and they pay higher taxes because it is a considered a business? That's a great question. I don't know that question, uh, that answer. Um, but I do know, but I do know that retail cannabis does not have to follow regular zoning. They can open in somebody's home if they built the appropriate building. It can be in residential, it can be in commercial. As long as they follow the zoning um, rules that go along with that section, they are welcome to start a cottage industry business. Um, and I will get into the details of that in a minute if you'd like to, if that's okay for now. Yes. Russell Bartell, uh, Williamsville. Sure. I was wondering, uh, how did this appropriation get started? And why is, why is this being voted on? So this is being voted on because um, the one bit of control that we have is that no retail licenses can be issued to current Newfane residents until we vote. And the, um, the first licenses will be issued in October. So people have already put stuff in to the state, and starting October 1st, they will start giving out these licenses. Or is for anybody that wants to open up a business? It's just for the retail cannabis licenses. But that's what I was asking. How did this get started on our plate here? Was that brought up by the state, or was it brought up by someone in the town? I don't know how to answer it started out with the state passing a law. Sorry, I'm something in my mouth. The state passed a law saying that they wanted to make cannabis sales legal. And so the state is controlling the majority of the decision making. They're controlling the majority of the licenses. Four of the six licenses that Katie described are all controlled by the state. They, you have to apply to the state and they make the decisions and towns have no vote on it. What the state then did say is 
that retail licenses and, and integrated retail licenses cannot be distributed in, within a town unless the voters of the town, by Australian ballot it turns out, have voted in favor of allowing cannabis in their sales in their town. Okay, that, that clarifies that much okay. better. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Go ahead. <laughs> Has anyone approached you, uh, offer an application because they want to have a cannabis retail? They don't, <laughs> they don't have to, and they have not notified us, but it goes directly, it goes yes, it goes directly, and it's not the state, it's not the Congress, and it's not the Senate, it's the State Cannabis Control Board. If you Google it, put in Vermont Cannabis Control Board, and it'll pop right up, and you can read all of the legislation, and I will warn you, the main bill is 163 pages, <laughs> and then there are at least four subsequent rules that are each 70 plus pages worth of documents. That's why I've been working on it for nine months <laughs> to digest it. Um, the state, so the original legislature has no details. It's just the broad sweeping legal scope of it. And the rules and all the things that I'm talking about, about the details of the legislation are in rules one and two under the Cannabis Control Board laws, rules, and regulations. Um, that's where all of the details of how these businesses need to operate, um, that's where all of that is. Um, so I'm going to keep going unless somebody has a question. Yeah? Michelle Barber, <coughs> Williamsville. Um, uh, just going back, I'm a little hung up on your, on your anyone can sell it anywhere um, comment that you made earlier, retail, retail licenses. So, um, as an example, can so someone help me to understand? Because what I heard you say was that if someone gets a retail license, they can operate out of a house, they can operate out of a business. Oh, okay. And Thank I'm you. just wondering does that mean, um, for example, like some other people in this room, I live on a dead end dirt road mm -hmm. in Williamsville, mm -hmm. and if someone decided they wanted to sell cannabis, out of their house there where I have all that traffic now going back and forth and nothing you to do about that? You would. Um, but there are very specific things that people have to go through, which I will detail if I can keep going. Yes, please. Um, okay. <laughs> um, so, any new business like a cannabis retail business requires are required to file the zoning permit with the town zoning administrator and follow any zoning specifics listed in the zoning ordinance such as signage size light pollution odors wastewaters and not all of these are examples that concern new fame we don't have a, a, a water treatment facility we don't have town water so that is immediately right off but those are just examples of things that zoning administrators can enforce um, and businesses that are in uh, a town that has sewage and, and town water, they have to actually keep very careful records of how much water they are using and how much they're putting back into the wastewater system. Um, it's fascinating. Um, um, Cannabis retail specifically doesn't have to follow the regular commercial zoning regulations and can be a cottage industry in a residential zone so long as all other regulations and guidelines outlined in the cannabis legislations and addendums and the town zoning ordinances are followed. This includes separate locked and secured buildings. An existing business cannot add on a cannabis retail shop within their building and somebody can't just have a business in their home. They have to have a separate locked building. Valid ID checks at the point of entry and at the point of transaction where you actually purchase, slide your card, do whatever. Video recording of doors at point of transaction and the secured storage within the building for product. And owners must hold on to all recordings for 30 days minimum. Employees must be 21 years old and have clean background checks. 
with some nonviolent exceptions. Wear photo ID at all times, etc. No underage people can be on the premises. Sorry, Jesse, you have to stay in the car. <laughs> <laughs> this is my son. I apologize. Um, um, which would be different and even perhaps a little bit more strict than um, going to a liquor store and you can bring your kids in. Can't do that with marijuana. Um, Could I interrupt? Sure. You just said no minors uh, on, does that mean the whole premises or only the secured building? The secured building. Okay. And I will speak to that in just a moment because okay. there, there, is, there is a good point where I asked a question to the Cannabis Control Board at a meeting in January. Um, let's see. A family farm licensed cultivator or multi-license holder with a retail business on site must adhere to the same requirements of separate locked buildings where cannabis and or cannabis product is stored. So if a family farm with children on the premises has a cannabis retail store that they've opened, the children cannot go in that store at all. They can be in the fields, they can be at home, that's not a problem, but they cannot be in the store. Um, insurance is obligatory with some variation depending on license tier as defined in Rule 2, subsection 2.2.2. Um, proof of license and insurance must be displayed in plain sight at the establishment, like the uh, liquor licenses at restaurants need to be displayed. Um, transporting cannabis and or cannabis product has very strict parameters. This is something that wholesalers, retail, lab, cultivation, makeup, they all might be doing, right? Some, they might have their own vehicles to do this. Um, it can be done between license holders only, not to the public without a retail license. Um, and cannabis delivery is not possible. Somebody asked that, and I remember that. <laughs> um, medical, can, medical cannabis can be delivered. There's a difference there. Um, um, the vehicle itself must be an unmarked vehicle with a separate locked compartment from the driver and no product visible from outside the vehicle. So it's not going to look like a bank van pulling into the bank delivering money. You know, it's not going to look like that. It's probably going to be a nondescript white van with a separate compartment, something like that. Um, it has to be secure, it has to be locked, the driver has to be separated from the product entirely, and any flower and product must be locked within that compartment as well. Um, re records of pickups and deliveries for every type of license uh, must be kept of pickups and deliveries for all of the products uh, available. Now, I'd like to get a little bit into um, co-license um, strict, the strictures that are a little bit different. They are more strict. They have the most, they, so whatever, it doesn't matter what level that they um, have, re have requested their license to be, they must operate under the strictest, uh, the most stringent levels of security um, and canopy size equal to tier six cannabis, which is like 2,500 square feet of plants. Can you explain what a co-license is? So a co-license is somebody who has two licenses, um, say um, um, cultivation and um, laboratory for any of the six, any combination of those licenses that I spoke of originally, wholesale, laboratory, cultivation, Manufacture, retail, or integrated. Actually, not integrated because they already can do all of those things. Um, but they have to they they have to operate under the strictest guidelines for each of those. 
Um, and um, and I, I think that's about all. Does anybody have more questions? I have a question. Sure. Um, with the liquor, law, uh, liquor uh, licenses, they have to be a certain distance away from you know, a variety of places. Do the yep. same kind of rules apply to this? So the only, um, that's a great question, thank you. The only um, restriction is that they cannot be within 500 feet of a school. That's it. Which seems a little lenient to me, but, yeah, just um, the same thing. but we have lots of space and only one school, so. Yes? Um, you, you've read all, the majority of this. I can't expect you to read all of it. Right. Um, is there, with the growing portion, is there any restriction to where they can grow and what can be visible and not visible? Yes, yes, they have their own very strict set of laws. Um, um, outdoor plants um, must be hidden from sight, either by hedge or fence. Um, they cannot be visible from the road. So that's a, number one. Um, they have restrictions on how much plant they can have at one time. There are approximate figures in both square feet and number of plants for each tier, of which there are six levels for cultivation. And there's outdoor cultivation and indoor cultivation, and somebody can also do both with which mixed cultivation. So you you said that uh, that they have to be hidden from the road, so that's a restriction for the growers, and the growers are controlled yeah. by the state only? The state only. Okay. Correct. Uh, Jake Urado, I'm wondering about the benefit to our town, I happy town, uh, there's no additional sales tax, so the town doesn't benefit from that. And I'm wondering if these people who are cultivating, they pay a lower tax rate because they say it's a farm. What is the benefit? So, yeah, good question. Um, the only, at least this year, let me just find my note on that. Agricultural zoning laws apply only to established farms, outdoor growth less than a thousand square feet, or approximately 125 plants. Okay? Um, those are the only people that get ag recognition at this point. Is Vermont benefiting from? Vermont gets 14% of the taxes. Okay. Yep. And now, they, they don't have to report this to, to the town at all if they are growing in the town? Growing? Um, not to my knowledge. The only uh, notification the town will get is if a retail license is approved after we vote, which would be finalized October 13th um, and made public, I assume, on the 14th, just because of the hours. Um, is, oh, I'm sorry. You're good. Okay. Um, is there a density um, rule as to how many can be within a certain square mile of town, or, or they could like we could have 432 here if we wanted, if they want <laughs> for for the retail? Yeah, for the retail. Um. I guess theoretically there could be a bunch. Yeah. I, I highly doubt that. <laughs> but yeah, but, but mean, this is theoretical. This is what we're um, talking about. It's theory. Right? Yeah. Um, the, I mean, theoretically, yes, there could be several. Um, so there is no density. Uh, I mean, no, but that's a great question. I can certainly ask people. Yeah. Density? Per square mile, you said? For anything, you know, for however you want to define it. Sure, yeah. or village. Um, those are certainly questions that I can turn around and ask um, the DLCT and, and 
um, the next time I have a cannabis update at a select board meeting, I can answer that for you. I will listen to it. Great. <laughs> All right. Um, the other question. Oh, this is right out of my head. Oh, we well, said something about they have to apply to the uh, planning and zoning uh, to DRB. Um, do they have would have the same rules that you would have for any commercial facility, as in parking and access and? Um, I believe so. It would be up to what our planning laws state, which I, I have not reviewed our zoning laws. Yes, they would have to meet the town's, whatever the town has. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. I, just a procedural issue is that I, we are still in a town meeting, okay. and we have to have enough people to adjourn when it's time to adjourn. So oh, how, how many, many people that? do we need? Well, we're getting good blame. Well, no, this is fine. I'm just, okay. I'm just letting you know that at some point, if there's everybody's very good on. We're all sure. We'll be here. Yeah. 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 Could we maybe yeah. suggest the time that we're going to end? I would make a, a motion that we continue for another ten minutes and then wrap up. Second. Great. Second. Um, excuse me. I, it, well, no. Nope. So you can second it and then. Put it on the floor to um, vote on it, uh, or rather to discuss it. I have something to say about that. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's anyone here who wants has some other business that's not cannabis related. Oh, true. Sure. So maybe we can end with cannabis in ten minutes. I'd like to amend it. I agree to amend it in ten minutes more for for pot. The <laughs> <laughs> pot. Why? Um, Gloria. Gloria, I had called on you. Um, I just need a clarification. I'm tired. There's been all sorts of stuff going on. Sure. So when you're talking now about having a secured building, mm -hmm. et cetera, that's only for somebody who gets a retail license, right? Correct. We haven't voted on this motion yet, and we haven't. It's a friendly meeting at this point. So if I wanted to grow 25 acres, what would I be classified as? 25 acres. You would be a tier six cannabis cultivator. It wouldn't be agricultural? Um, 37,500 square feet or 4,687 plants or more is a tier six cultivator. <laughs> So we're not going to have large, like giants, outdoor cultivation happening. Um, and indoor cultivation. What, what prevents it? Why couldn't somebody be a tier six cultivator? You can be if you if you want to, but it's it's less than or equal to, so you can't go over that. That's the max quantity that you can have going at once for outdoor cultivation. Indoor cultivation is less than or equal to 25,000 square feet. Yes. Jane, you had a last question. I'm wondering if neighbors have a problem with someone who is growing in an area that maybe is not zoned for it, or there are covenants in the property and, and the neighbor is not adhering to covenants. Do the neighbors get help in reinforcement, or do they have to take it upon themselves uh, and possible confrontation with people who are growing in places they should not be in town? So legally, as residents, we can all grow our own cannabis. Um, uh, so for we are allowed to have, use. for personal, personal use, use, we are allowed to have a very okay. small amount, which is six, two flowering plants per adult, up to okay. six plants at a time per adult. Okay, so it, it would only be a problem if it's someone is trying to um, sell to others and having people yes. come into the neighborhood and, and in traffic. In and those cases, that would be if they are a license holder. Right, one of these licenses that we've discussed, and they are selling from their property, that's something that you would report to the Cannabis Control Board at the state level. Directly to them. Okay. You could also come tell us and let us know that something's going on. But the actual report would go to the Cannabis Control Board 
um, at the state level. Thank you. Yes. Uh, and speaking as a, a member of the community and not a town moderator, and that is, um, we get to vote on this. And I can't buy most of my groceries in town in New Fame. Um, if I needed to buy cannabis, I could go to Brattleboro where I get almost everything else. You don't have to vote in favor of this. It's right. not required. Yes. So then all these questions don't even have to be answered. Can I just add a, a comment that what we're voting on is whether or not to allow retail sales in new things. Everything else is, is decided by the state. It's interesting to know the information. The reason to vote for, and I'm not advocating, I'm just clarifying. The reason to vote for the cannabis would be for convenience of, of buying it here in town and or for supporting any of our local merchants who might want to sell it. As far as I personally can tell, those would be the two reasons to choose to vote in favor of it. There are lots of reasons you might want to vote no if you just don't want that kind of activity here in town. Yeah. But that's what we're voting on. We're voting on the, on the sale of it in our community. Right. I've got a Russ Bartell from Williamsville. I just want to thank you for presenting this. You're welcome. Here, um, uh, here. Hear. Absolutely. I hope that people will, on the select board, will push this out in some type of newsletter to the voters so that they have a clear way of deciding whether they're going to vote yes or no on this. I see no point in having this in our town myself. That's just my feeling. Right. And you are absolutely entitled to it. Um, I think lots of people in was speaking to convenience, and, and so was um, Deb. And certainly, like, it's nice to not have to, we have pharmacies up in Townsend. It's nice to not have to go to Brown Road to get medication. Some people feel like, Cannabis is medication to them. And there's lots of people who feel that way. And so being able to have it available in your community is amazing. Um, that's how I feel about it. I think that. Um, uh, well, everybody has their own choice. Yes, but right. I just hope that the select board will put it out there clearly so that everybody, not everybody in the town came to this meeting tonight, obviously, right. <laughs> but um, a, a, a good written newsletter out to the town before this vote would be a, a big help to get this, to let people make their decision thoughtfully, whichever way they choose, you know? Right. We also have an informational meeting on September 6th, mm -hmm. yeah, where we October. went September 6th, we did have an informational meeting, and that is available online on our town website, where we discussed all of this stuff at that point as well. So anybody can tap into that and review it who is not here currently, um, who is here currently and wants to hear again. Um, and, um, and this meeting will be available on TV. Right, and this meeting will also be available. Um, on the town website within three or four days? Two days, within two days. Gloria. Just one final statement. How much has the select board worked with the West River Valley Thrives, the whole thing of the youth? I mean, we, we get into this, and yeah, it's kind of groovy for those who want to do this. They can grow their own. Mm -hmm. But for them, yes, those youth cannot go into any retail and buy it. I understand that. Correct. But we're going to be making it that much more readily available in the same way that cigarettes are mm -hmm. for youth. And with developing minds, that is a problem. Yes. So that's my 
opinion of, you know, people, for the convenience, conveniently, how much does it take for an adult to grow two plants? Then they can do their own thing. Mm -hmm. But to make it as though this is something, and this is a, I mean, I've known this issue in the argument throughout the years, mm -hmm. but we're still enticing our youth. Um, you speak to a good point. Um, the West River Valley Prize has been has presented um, with us before. I, I have been in constant communication with the director, Meg Gonzalez, um, and she has helped me get to roundtables and various other places where we everybody's still digesting and understanding the legislation together. Um, and they are. Uh, they don't have an opinion. They just put out information, which is fantastic. Um, and I agree. I don't think you should be using marijuana uh, for as long as they can abstain. <coughs> um, uh, but you're right. It is something that people have to weigh in their hearts, in their own beliefs. And um, that, that's a very good point. Thank you. Ten minutes. We're at the ten minute mark. <coughs> Um, can we take one last question? Oh, wait. There's, there's the pro and the con. The, the pro is you would save 1% having it in town because you don't have to pay the extra 1% in gravel or right. tax on it. The con is the traffic. Traffic? Yeah. And what it, what, you know, because someone would go get the stuff and then, then they, with ease, could then. You know, like alcohol, there's always a buyer, and there's always a kid who wants to be, you know, Right. Yes. Just to run in my quick um, suggestion. Last one, then. What do what this gentleman's, um, Russell Brassic, Russell's uh, suggestion that the select board make sure that people know that this is going on? Uh, a very inexpensive way to communicate is uh, every day direct, every door direct mail, and the door I think it's about one hundred and twenty dollars. Put a flyer, take them to the post office in a particular organized way. It's, it's we we've done that twice yeah. in the last three weeks, and it's more like six hundred dollars <laughs> yeah. to get it out to everybody. Uh, we put out two flyers in the last two weeks and done the everyday direct mailing and each postal route and postal code and post office boxes have their own cost. Um, and the main route in New Fame, which also includes some of Brookline, which has had some fun confusion, um, um, is the biggest cost of that and that's a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. Last time we did, on the planning commission, it was about, it was less than $200 to do all three. No, not anymore. Now it's more than 200 just to do the new fame post office. Thank you. And I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you for that really excellent explanation of something that is very complicated. There's a, moving, a, a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. second. All those, it doesn't, there's no discussion. Uh, all those in favor, please be paying by saying aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. You can just stay here. All right. <laughs> thank you all very much thank for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and that's really, um, I forgot to do that. Thank our select board, our administrative assistant, our Thank you, Treasurer. Everybody who works for the town. Thank you for coming.